right? If you analyze uh, this streams, tuples, sets, dictionaries, and lists, there are some common features to all these types. Right? The easiest way is remembering the common feature and then compare each other and find the distinguishers or the uh, maybe uh, when you compare, you can compare the differences between. So these two, right? Not two like this, all these options, you can compare the differences. So that is the recommended way. Right, when it comes to uh, first, so these strings, right? When it comes to strings, so how these all these types are different from the basic types is like basic type can store only one type of data, only one data at a time, one value at a time. For an example, so if it is an integer, one value at a time. If it is a float, one value at a time. Boolean, one value at a time. String, one value at a time, but there's a difference in string. String is like, yeah, we have learned that in primitive types, but string, you can access each character separately. So not unlike the uh, these uh, integers, floats, booleans, each character you can apply, you can uh, you can access separately. That is the difference in the strings. So anyway, that string difference is also applicable for tuples, sets, lists, and dictionaries, right? So here, when you come to uh, right, for an example, as you say, list is what list is a set of items set of ordered items according to index. What is index? What is index? Uh, list, list is set of ordered items and access using indexes. What is index? The location of it. Yeah, location. Uh, basically location. How indexes are started? Normally indexes are starting from zero. Okay, that part you already know. Then when it comes to tuple, tuple is also a type of list. It is similar to list, but only thing is it is read only. You can't change that. You can't change the values of tuple. And then set. Set, this is similar to mathematical sets, right? In sets, again, you have a list of items, but these items are unique. You can't have repetitive values. But in list and tuples, it's supporting repetitive values. But set is not supporting repetitive values. And it is not ordered even. It is unorganized. It's just group. But here, sequence. You can access the items one by one. But this one is, you can't access the items one by one. You can access all the items. That is true. But the thing is, um, you can't access in order. It is unordered. Unordered and also unique. It's not repetitive. And dictionary. So dictionary is also similar to list, but there's a difference, fundamental difference is you have to define indexes. Indexes are not starting from zero. You cannot access indexes like that. So, but you can use the named indexes. We have to define the indexes. Okay, that is the fundamental difference. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this, right? Mm -hmm. But I think we, we, we have done this uh, previously, but just a summary. Right. Let's take a screenshot of this. OK. Yeah. Right. Then, right, let's analyze string first. Let's analyze string first. And when you analyze the string, String supports two kind of mathematical uh, or two mathematical operators are supports in string, but not for max. That is for concatenation. What is concatenation? What is concatenation? Yes. Uh -huh. What is concatenation? To link. Sorry? To link it, like put it together. Yeah, link it, join in together. Concatenation is join in together. You can join it together, right? That is called concatenation. Join in together is concatenation, right? And if you use plus sign, 
it's joining together. If you use multiple, multiple sign, it's multiplying. That means, uh, for an example, hello multiplied by three, it will join hello three times. Hello, hello, hello. Hello multiplied by five. Hello, 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 hello. Likewise, it's joining together. Right? That is concatenating. So those two operators are there. Those two mathematical operators are there in strings too, but not for maths, for concatenation. And the indexers, very important. The indexers, positive indexers are from 0 to n minus 1. What is n? n is number of characters. Here, if it is uh, if it is my name, my name is given as a string. The first character is called zeroth character. And it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, likewise, going up to n minus 1. Right. The, then again, you have negative indexes that is minus n to minus one, right? Because you can't go to n minus one to zero. No, zero is not negative. Therefore, it's minus n minus n means how many characters in my name? It's twenty-five. It's minus twenty-five minus twenty-four. And what is the negative index of this n? The last n. What is the negative index of last n? Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, what is the minus negative index of last n? Minus one. Minus one, yeah. Positive index of last n? Positive index? Uh, 25. 25 or 24? Starting from zero, right? 24. 24, right? You have to remember that. That is very important because this is applicable in List, tuple, dictionary, all these things. Right? Then, length of uh, string can be obtained by using length function. Length of string can be obtained by using length function. And specific, pay, specific place in a string can be accessed using its index, negative or positive index. And specific range of a string can be accessed in this pattern. You have to do the starting point, stopping point, starting, stopping, and stepping. So if you give like this, it will start from zero, the first character, and go up to four, zero, one, two, three, four. Stop when it is five. And step in two means it's going two by two. D, S, N, likewise, it's going two by two. Okay, so yes. do you need explanation on this or is it clear? I got this until here. Sorry? I understood to you. Okay, take a screenshot of this as well, right? Right, there are some other ways of accessing the ranges, not just this. You can give, these are some additional examples. Ranges can be accessed using Without giving the start, stop, then it will access everything. Without giving the start, stop, and step, then also it will access everything. Right? If you don't give the start and stop, it will start from the beginning and go to the end. He also start from the beginning, go to the end. Step is going one by one, defaults. So if you not give value, defaults are the start, default start, and default end, and default step. Default step is one by one. But you can uh, give the default start, default step, three by three, and it is accessing three by three. And default start, default, uh, default start, default strain, uh, end, sorry, default start, default end, and minus one by one will access the reverse order. Okay? Yeah. Right. So the question. So I'm going to give you a small question just to try this. You can try this. Input the full name. So writer want to input the full name here. I mean, put in the full name. And then you have to output the name with initials. Can you do this? This is a type of question. But uh, anyway, you will not be a so, uh, In the beginning, the first part of the paper, you will not be asked coding. But sometimes you might ask the explanation. But if you know coding, then explanation is nothing. Sorry, if you know the coding, it's very easy to do the explanation. Okay, can you just do this quickly? 
I'll give you five minutes. Input the full name and print the names with initials. That's what you said. So this is actually using this. You said that you are okay with the theory. Now you know. Right, good. So then the next thing is using the theory. So this is where you said you are having issues using the theory. So, but why I'm giving this? Because I want you to practice and think in computational pattern, computational thinking pattern. How computer will think? Okay, for an example, you give Siddhas Ansala and you just need to, uh, or uh, maybe your full name, you just need to get the output name with initials. How to do this? Using this. Just using this. Nothing else, right? Just using this. Can you do this? Okay. Okay, let me take ideally. Okay, uh, this is ideally, and uh, so you are going to give the name. Okay, let's say name is uh, Amil Nuan Samara a long name like this. Right, length here one. So you know. Definitely, the first character is initial, right? So even though this case is simple, I know that this, this is very simple, right? Question is very simple. But uh, when you want to answer, answer is much logical. You have to think, you have to think, you have to train your brain to answer this kind of question, right? So I know it is not easy to answer this uh, first time because there are a lot of logics flowing here. Okay, name. So this is the name and you know the first initial is anyway, name zero is the first initial that is A. The next initial is okay. N. You don't have, actually you have short methods of getting that. So you have short methods, right? Yeah, that means you can split this to a string. Uh, so there are ways to split this. Okay, let's do something like this. This is an easy method. You can do the splitting part. You can split this to uh, split and get a uh, list. When you split, oh. the stream will be converted to list. Right? Then what you can do? Okay. Right? Then uh, for, you can say for item in uh, this name split. Item in name split. Uh, so you can say uh, print uh, items print the item zeroth letter right so if you write like this you will get ans so there are like there are one one line two line codes to do this right and the last one right. last name you have to tell uh, so then item in this and then you can assign this okay i'll, I'll do both methods right i'll do both methods so for this you need additional functions right but you didn't know that right did you know this? There are some additional functions like this to split and get this. Did you know? No. No, right. Okay. Just forget. So you don't know that. So let's go to the fundamentals, the baby magics. Right? That means you, you just go and write a code, a code in like amateur. Amateur means the starter. Right? You have name. Name equal. But amateur, even you are amateur, that doesn't mean that you are a baby. Right? Amateur means still you need to be intelligent and think wisely. Mm -hmm. Right? Amateur programming is something like that. Amateur programming is not like low skill. It, uh, a major program need to be skilled, but only thing is inexperienced. No, don't know much short ways of doing inexperienced. Don't know how to use libraries, maybe like that, but can do. Okay, so then I'm keeping the initials. Let's say initials. So anyway, you know the first initial is name zero. To that you have to add a dot, concatenate a dot and space that you already know, right? Because a dot n dot summer. We are our expectation is what our expectation is a dot n dot summer of either. correct? Yeah, right. That is our expectation a dot n dot summer of either. Okay, then I have a dot. Then what I can do for I can apply for. Okay, uh, so I'm, I, I can just go through this for item or item or for letter, whatever, in name. 
for each letter in the name. Or you can say, so there's another way of doing that. Both, uh, let's write the other way. For I, uh, or I can say for index or I in length of <coughs> name. Then it will go from the start to end. I can print, let's print, a print. I'm going to print I and it will print the indexes. The second loop, if I ask to print letter, it will print the character. Okay, I think you know both loops, right? Mm -hmm. You can either go index by index or character by character. Let's run this. And this is our question. Okay, by doing this kind of question, we are practicing for more similar questions. This will cover many disciplines. That's why I have given this one as a question, question.py. And you can see, oh, what is it? For I, I so for I in length, I in range, sorry, I in range, in range loop, right? I forgot the letter, word in. Okay, now you can see, Sprint in the indexes from how many letters from 0 to 22, and these are the letters. Right, 0 to 22 you can print letter by letter, even right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you want to print the if you want to use the first method to print uh, the letter, still you can do right. How you can print name. I then it's at accessing index by index, right? Yes. Understood, right? Then first net first method is printing. Let's say I'm not going to end this, end with uh, a dash. Then in front of that, I'm going to print the letter. And then the first method, you can see the first method is printing. Okay, here. So it can print the value also okay can second method uh, can it be used to print the index no but you can modify how no. you can say z equal uh, zero and uh, you can print the letter and let's end with dash again same thing and uh then uh, maybe you can print the letter end with dash okay end with dash then print c then what will happen initially zero will be printed and then you can increment c equals c plus what do you think about that method you can manually start from zero and keep adding one so using the second method also you can print index, but that they are, that is not natural. But we have done, we have just manipulated. Mm -hmm. Right? Anything is possible, right? Yeah. Nothing is impossible. So you can, if you can think, so there are there are no ways to print that because in naturally in that loop you don't have index, but you can generate index because you know that index is going from zero to n. This is generated index, right? Mm -hmm. Understood or not? Yeah. Using this 0 to n, we have generated index. Here, what has happened? So you get the index. So using the index, you access the element. And that is how the first loop executed, right? Okay. Uh, shall we take a screenshot of this quickly? Yeah. Right. Because I'm going to modify the code. Ultimately, you will have the final code. That's why you should know the steps. By knowing the steps only, you can do the coding, right? So that, this is the main issue. If you are reading a book, what will happen? You will read the final code, right? If you are reading a book, you will read the final code or the answer. If you read the answer strip, you will read the final answer. Then you don't see the intermediate steps. That's why you cannot understand the logic, right? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, sir. Right. Understood why we need steps also? 
right step one is basically step one we show we can access later by later or index by index either using the first method or using the second method we can access this is a fundamental or basic way of doing that okay so this is version one v1 v1 we try to access by using indexes and letters. Okay, version two, we should know when we receive space. How to get it now? How we can know that? Right, whether we are getting space or not. You know that. Don't be afraid, tell, tell it. How should we know there's a space or not? Hello. Uh, yeah. How should we know there's a space or not? How can we identify? Using which control structure? So we have learned three control structures: sequence, selection, and repetition. Now we have used repetition to print or each letter, print each index. Now we want to know whether there's a space. For conditions we are using. Yes, for conditions we are using. Mm. What is the control structure we are using for conditions? You know it. Don't think that you can't do programming. So if you prejudge, if you think this is difficult for me, I will never understand that, then you will never try even. Okay, so let's say you have marks, right? You have marks. For marks greater than 50, you are going to give pass. Marks greater than, marks less than 50, you are going to give fail. What you are going to use? If. Sorry? If function. If function. So here, what you're going to use? You get oh. space, ah, same if function, right? same if function. So you can say if, if this name i, you know the character is name i, if it is equal to space, right? That is the, if you use second method, you can say if, if letter is equal to space, right? Both, you can use this. So now you don't need this printing part. I'm going to comment that. You know that I can access one by one now. I don't need this now. So instead of doing this, what I'm doing, I'm checking whether, right? I'm checking whether I get space. Did you understand this step or not? Yeah, I guess. Right. Okay, then if there's a space, what is the next immediate letter? That is initial, right? Yeah. If there, okay, I'll, I'm going to use the same name and initials here also in the second one. Okay, if there's a space, the next letter is initial. You know that. How to get that? Then you can say initially equal. Yes, initially equal. Uh, yes, think, think, think can do. So I'm supporting you to learn. It's the one after the space. Yeah, one after space. How to tell that? I is the space. Then so what is I the next plus one? one? I plus one. Right? So think that way, develop that thinking, right? So I can't, I can't be with you for your examination, but if you develop the thinking, that will be with you for your, your exam, right? Do one by one, think one by one. If this is space, you are accessing character by character. If the character is space, next initial, I plus one is initial. So then what you are going to do to the existing initials, you are going to add, you are going to concatenate 
name i plus one, and you are also going to concatenate a dot and space. Agree? Yeah. Right. So you can do the same here. If this is, you can say initial is equal initial plus. Now you have this. Uh, what now you have to know? It is not i. It is c plus one, right? Because c yeah. is going from one by one by one. No? It is c plus one because we have maintained c separate count. C plus one. Uh, z plus one is the n. We are going to add the. Okay. Now if after all these things. After all these things, now so let's print this right. Print the initials, and here also I'm going to print the initials in the second loop also. This is uh, like this is lengthy. I know this need more coding, but first of all we should learn that now. Okay. okay. Now you can see how it is generated, right? In the first round, it is only a a a first five letters. It is only a a a a a a, but n came now a n a n a n a n a, so you keep recording that and s came now a n s. He also the same, right? This is step number right. two, right? I think you better have a screenshot of this one also. This is how we stepped into the next stage, right? Stage number two. This is how we stage in, we we are uh, now we are in the stage number two. Now we have found all the initials. Now problem is, do we need S? The last initial, do we need? Or oh, you need only two initials? We need three initials. Sorry? We need all three of them. You need A, N, S, Samaravira or A, N, Samaravira? Oh, A, N, Samaravira. A, N, Samaravira. You don't need A, N, S, Samaravira, right? Last initial, you can skip. How? How to skip the last one? Because you know, if I print this, if I print this inside the for loop, you will get that. But after for loop, you will get the whole thing, right? If I just de-indent that, decrease the indent, you can see it will give only A, N, S, the last result. But you have a mechanism to start from the beginning, end from, let's say, end from minus three, right? You have a method. What is that? Start from beginning. That means you are starting from the zero. End from minus three. Minus three means dot is minus one, s is minus two, space is minus. Three, understood? Yeah. Minus one, minus two. When it comes to space, it will stop. Then I'm telling, start from zero, start from here, end from minus three. Now what will happen? Right, you will get the first two initials only, right? Here, A, N. Mm -hmm. Here also we can try that, right? Start from this, end from minus three. It is easy to... And from the minus value, why? Because we don't know how many initials are there. We can't go from the go from this side because let's assume we have like uh, here something like this. Rap, Nayak, Mudi, and singular names, you know. Dosa, Dian, Selahage, Don, Amila, Nuan, Samaraviro, something like this. Then you don't know the initial count from the beginning, but still you know the count from the last end. Right now, still you'll get here yeah. R M D A N R M D A N because the last two characters you don't need. Understood? Right. Right. So, what do you think? Is it mm. difficult or is it tricky? Tricky. It's tricky, you know. So what do you have to do then? Practice. Practice. Right? That is the only way. So even writing papers, you will not be able to develop this. But doing so, I advise you to do one thing. If you see any code in a paper, look at past papers. If you see coding in paper, so what do you have to do? 
recode it. Try to code it. But code it step by step. Don't code everything and see whether it's running. Then you won't understand, right? Yeah. Here, see how I have, I have done. I have taken, commented, skipped that. I have written this here. And because it's coming in the loop, then I have de-indented and uh, decreased the indent and taken this side and then taken this. So I'm doing this step by step, right? But so I can't do everything because we don't have time to discuss everything like this, no? Right? We don't have time to discuss everything like this, but what do you have to do? So in the papers, when you see the questions, please read, please do this practically. Practically do this. So you might think that there is a time waste. No. If you do like that only, you will be ready for the next type of question. Okay, now you know this. Now what I have to do, what I have to remember, right? I have to remember the last part, this part. How to get this part? Right, you can keep a variable. Okay, you can keep a variable. Let's say uh, another variable name. Okay, current name, CN. So initially, current name, I'm going to start uh, from zero. Zero means this is the current name. Right, but when you find space, I'm going to change the ZN. CN is equal to i plus 1. Sorry. Yeah, i plus 1. Cn is equal to i plus 1. Okay, let me print Cn and you will understand why. Let me print C. Okay. Initially, it says, okay, Cn is 11. 11 means this mudiyam se one. So, it says you are starting from this one. Then Cn is 25. 25 means this character. Then CN is A, this character. Then CN is, that is 29. Then 35, that is this character. Finally, it's saying CN is 41. 41 means this character. Okay. Understood why I am keeping a reference to the next immediate character? Mm -hmm. So, what is the usage? Usage is you can add this right to this. You can add name. So now you know the character that is 41, that is CN. And from that to the end, starting from this to end, you can add. Right? Then what will happen after the coding? You will get. Okay, here. Yeah. Right? Mm, right. I'm keeping the reference. The next immediate, I'm keeping a reference to the next immediate. Initially, is zero. After that, I'm repeatedly keep the reference to the next immediate character after the space here. After the space, next immediate character. I'll keep the reference. Move in, move in, move in. And last reference will be automatically remaining here. Last reference will be automatically remaining here. That reference I'm using. And from that to forward, I'm adding. So you'll get the printing. Okay. Now I don't need this printing also. Here, if I want to add how to do this, you know. <coughs> Again, I have to keep a refer reference here. Let's say zero. <coughs> here I'm saying telling C N equals C plus one. Here I'm telling C N is name. C N to the end. Right. So let's change this name, maybe name two. Otherwise, it's you are confusing in the previous one. Name two. Um, name two. Name two. This is initials two. Initials two. Initials two. Initials two. Okay, let's try another name. Okay, just run this and you can see I'm getting two names. R M D G M Samaravira, R M D A and Samaravira, right? 
you have to fade the input and it will give. So now you have developed the code. So what you can do, right? If without giving the name, without giving the name, you can ask, right? This part also you can comment now. Now you can ask user, hey, name is equal, please input, enter your full name. You ask in the full name and first method will give you that. And I'm asking another time, the second method, asking enter your full name and that will also give you the results. Now let's run. And it will ask your name, what is full name, okay. Okay, you'll get name with initials. Enter your full name. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, you're okay with the coding, right? Yeah. Still difficult. I need to try it. You have to try it, right? Yes, you have to try it. Yeah. But when you're trying, so if you try everything, what will happen from the beginning to end? You won't understand, right? You only understand, okay, I wrote the code. Now it's giving the output. But that is not helping you, right? Please understand that that is not helping you. What you have to do is, please, please, please do this step by step as I did, right? Yeah. So how I did, right? You saw how I did. I did this step by step, one by one, right? Added one again, likewise, I did this one by one. So then that is the way of doing. Please do in that way and understand. And I would like to tell, so there are easy methods. Or less, there are easy methods, okay. Let's try for the third one, name tree. I'm telling uh, input, or let's give a name like this. I'm going to give a name like this. The easy method is you can make it make a list. LST equal, you can say name tree dot split. And you will get names if you print this, right? You will get all this. So I'm going to comment everything from the beginning. Let's use three single quotations and three single quotations to stop this. Okay, so then it's running the last code only. Right now you can see Ratnaik Mudian Selagi Don Gishani Metuta Samaravi. Everything is clear in a list. When it is clear in a list, what you can do? Right? When it is clear in a list, you can access each items for uh, N in LST. You can print. Uh, you can say initials, right? Initials is empty. Here you can say initials equal initials plus N zero item zero, right? And then let's print initials, print initials. And you'll get zero of each means the letter right here r m d g m s r m d g m s you are getting that and to that i'm going to add dot and space oh sorry dot and space and then you'll get dot and space in between each okay great so now we are having that and for that you don't need the last three characters. So you can say minus three, last two characters you don't need. 
and then to this you can add the uh, last item last item of this list lst is last item how to get the last item if you find the length of lst you will get number of items that minus one is the last item okay when you run this you will get the name without much effort right it's in a list now you don't need to print this when name is given it's converted it will be converted to name with initials instantly using the list operations here only few lines but same thing did you understand the second method yeah so i think this part is clear now you are getting from the beginning to the except last two characters you are getting here you are collecting the characters Length of list is number of items in the list. If this one is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six minus one is fifth item, right? Because this is zero item, first item, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So length of list minus one is the last item. Okay. Yeah. Right. Try that also. So now you see there are multiple ways of doing the same thing. I don't know what they will be asked in your examination, what they are going to ask, but right, I know again, I don't know what they will ask, but I know what they will ask. What is meaning of that? For sure, they will mm -hmm. test the concepts. They will test whether you know repetition. They will test. So to test that, they can ask anything. In your examination, definitely repetition will be there. Sequence will be there. Selection will be there. That means if else, for, while, those things will be there. For sure. In your examination, variable part will be there. Operation part, concatenation part will be there. And extracting will be there. In addition to that, they can ask the special functions like split. Right? But all other things are concepts. Don't think that as a question. I have not discussed one question, right? I have discussed many questions. I have not discussed some question. What are they? I have not discussed uh, sorting, bubble sort, selection sort. I have not discussed now. I'll discuss that next in the uh, next one. So after finishing this, after you write this and test this, I'll discuss that one. Okay, please write this and test this now itself. Otherwise, you'll forget. Oh. All right, next uh, question, I'll discuss uh, something similar to uh the 2020 yeah 2020 past paper uh but not the same right something similar to that i just want to uh okay so let's say uh so arrays arrays are basically these lists right so you don't have any other uh, different structure but lists are similar to arrays so here indexes everything so if you ask about array and how to find this and all so how to return element all these concepts are there Okay, so let's say, so if you are to uh, given, right, if you are given a task to generate a random number, right, if you are given a task to generate a random number in Python, and uh, then, so if, uh, then you have to assign that to, uh, or you have to add that to the array, append that to the array, right, array or list, right, okay question uh, so please write down the question please write down as a question uh, generate random numbers between between 1 to 100 and Add ten such numbers to an array or list. You must avoid duplicates. Okay, so related coding is given, right? Related coding is given in uh, some so somewhat similar to this question. 
that's a related uh, code in you can check the paper right i'm not going to discuss the same question you can check the paper mm -hmm. so there's a question given for this and they have given the code actually pseudo code uh, or uh, so why the reason for giving pseudo code is like uh, there are some students learn in other languages in other schools right mm -hmm. other than python so some are learning java some are learning some other languages so all of them should be able to write the questions. That's why this pseudocode thing is given. Like they are not directly there in that writing Python or something like that. So in school, maybe you might get, but uh, not in the exam. Exam, basically, they are giving their own coding format. So you saw in the last paper also, right? Yeah. Right. This That is general. Generally, that is there in Java, that is there in Python, that is there in Pascal or any other language. That concept is there. You have to get the concept. Okay, so generate random numbers between 1 to 100 and add uh, 10 numbers to array or lists, right? So I'll tell you how to add this, how to add a number to an array. So let's say you have empty array or empty list. You can declare empty list like this. Uh, let's say my list. If you want that to be empty, you can declare it as empty. And later, if you want to add values, you can say my list. And you can give the uh, index and tell uh, some value, and but it will tell uh, index out of range. Since this list is list is empty, so you are trying to add a value and it says it's out of range. So the way to do this is basically you can say uh, my list dot append, and you can then give the item to be appended okay let's say 45 you just need to append that list and now if you check print this my list now you can see the 45 after appending then you can change the value to some other value right so then if you print that value is changed appending is possible but the thing is you can't you cannot directly tell the index and edit so that is not there but this is one way one way of creating the list empty list or oh, there's another way uh, let's say marks is another list and you can say uh, you can call list right and this is another way of creating list then if you print marks so you can see it's a empty list that is the second way of doing that print marks it's empty list. still still you can't add right still you cannot say mark zero is equal to something because that index is not there when index is not there you can't add the item but still you can append the item right you can append the item for an example marks dot append and you can give a value understood mm -hmm. understood the concept creating new list yeah. and appending items or not mm -hmm. If not clear, please ask, right? Appended means adding okay. elements. How to remove? Explain the append part, sir, again. Sorry? The append part. Append part? Mm -hmm. Yes? Could you explain that part again? Yeah, append part will, so, if you directly tell index zero is this one, it says, no such index, no. Because we it's lem uh, list is empty, no? List is empty means you don't, you don't have any element so you can't name zero element fifth, fifth, uh, first element second element likewise you don't have elements it's empty so this is one way and this is another way of declaring empty element understood that yeah append will simply insert new element to the list nothing right if I, if you say marks dot append 90 then marks dot append 90 again i'm telling marks dot append uh, 78 marks dot append you can append any number of uh, values right yeah then you can print the marks and you will see all this here 90 90 78 93 and if if you if you append still you can append any any number any number any element you can append because basically to make uh, give a meaning only i'm appending numbers but you can even append strings right anything to a list you can append you can append hello or you can append true any time type of value you can append true you can append mm -hmm. and you can append a hexadecimal value zero x some value or you can append a binary value 
zero b uh, some binary you can append the uh, octal value zero o and some octal value and you can append uh, uh, scientific value 1.24 e plus 3 scientific value you can append logical value string value number scientific value a floating value you can append anything but uh, it's meaningless when you append many many type of data it's meaningless no so it's not it's like a jammed it's like collection of set of data no? it's, so not well organized to make it well organized so here you can see all the values right but basically what will happen to these hexadecimal values binary values and octal values it will be converted to decimal right and the scientific values also will be converted to float okay yeah right so this is possible this is how you append append means add in simply add in how to remove it you can use marks dot remove and you can give the uh, remove you can give this value which value you want to remove let's say 38 you want to remove marks dot remove 38 and when, when you print that you can see from middle 38 is here this one is removed no need to remove from the corner order right you can just remove uh, any value if value is duplicated what will happen it will remove all the values right so let's append okay let's remove 90 you have two 90s here let's remove 90 and you'll see after getting that it's it has sorry it has removed the first occurrence sorry not all the values the first occurrence will be removed then you have to remove again to remove the second occurrence mm -hmm. here now the second occurrence is also removed if i try to remove this further so it says not in list right it says not in list understood the list operations add pending removing creating mm -hmm. right or not yeah good okay so this part uh, add, so this is not for the question this is just for this part but uh, maybe don't write everything it will take time so take a screenshot of this and then you can remember right okay please take a screenshot of this Okay, and this. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay, now you know the uh, base. Now you know the uh, basically adding and removing part, right? So adding and removing part, and this is how you have to add. And how to generate a random number using Python? Uh, using the random function. Yeah, there's a run function in uh, which library? There's a run function, but there's a library. Naturally, you don't have random function. You have a library to do this. Right? That is that's a library called random, right? Please remember. There's a line for random. So, for an example, here, if I if you want, so I'm going to use, I'm going to come in this part, right? And so let's see, random. And if I need a random number, n, I can say uh, n equal uh, random dot uh, random. Easy, random dot random and it will give a random number between 0 and 1 right 0 and 1 if i print the random number print we'll get so don't worry about these functions because they will give this right they will give this in their so this will do this part this will do this part likewise they will give no need to remember these things right mm -hmm. but uh, something similar better to learn something similar why then you know how to apply this. Okay, how to make it like between uh, 1 and 100? 
so you will get a random number between uh, this you will get a random number between 0 and 1 you want to make it between 1 and 100 how yes if it is if something between 0 and 1 what happen if you multiply that by 10 0 multiplied by 10 is 0 1 multiplied by 10 is 10 10 the, then it will become 0 and 10 no the value will become in between 0 and 10 understood yeah right if i run this okay see let's run this now you can see it's be, it's between 0 and 10 run it again okay you can just run few times right if you want like let's say 4k in range so let's say 10 times you need 10 times 10 random numbers so i'm helping you doing this right without giving this mm -hmm. now straight away i'm just helping you doing this now you can see it's getting random numbers between 0 and 10 right. so what happen if you want to right, if you want the integer part only so you can just make it int convert everything to integer and it will be converting that to integer right easy row so if it is between 100 you'll get numbers between right numbers between 0 and 100 okay yeah right so this is how you generate random numbers and uh, there, there's another way right uh, so there's an, another another way of generating that that easy way you can say random dot rand int and you can give between 0 and 100 then for sure you'll get an so no need to do this operation let's say k and then uh, for j in range so 10 easy way in this easy way i'm going to print j in range 10 and i'm going to print okay that is easy it will do these two operations and generate your random number between uh, 0 and 100 and uh, direct to the center, right so here this is the round converted way and this is the easy way you can just give rand int okay so now rest is up to you i'll give you time i'll give you five minutes just to try because this is easy question now you know how to add to the list take a screenshot of this as well take a screenshot of this as well right now how now you know how to get a random number. you know how to add that to list only thing that you have to consider is what whether that is a duplicate or not in case of duplicate, you have to re uh, remove that. Here you have two numbers duplicated. So those duplicates you have to re remove. That's what you need to do. Okay, try this quickly. So I'll give you five minutes. Just try this. This is similar to the exam question. One of the exam questions in 2020 paper, you can just check. Okay, just try it. Right, uh, so you know how to generate a random number now. Either you can use the first way or second way. So you can generate the random number. That's all. So after generating the random number, so you know you have to generate 10 random numbers. The minimum is 10 random numbers. <coughs> right. So, but uh, these 10 random numbers, that is the minimum, right? If all are unique, then 10. We don't know whether this is unique or not. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function and uh, let's say new new random is the function name new random is the function name and um, uh, so what i'm going to do is uh, so i'm going to generate a random number here so import random is there then i'm going to use the second method let's say k is uh, the random number so you are getting going to get the k that is new random number 
and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm um, after assigning the random number after getting the random number uh, okay i'm going to sorry mistake here i need to have this import random right import random I just come in this then you have functions to define random number to generate then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the random number so when uh, adding the random number i have a list empty list like this let's say rand list initially it's empty nothing is there and i'm going to append this random number uh, that trend list the rand list i'm going to append this k right so then i'm taking the k uh, so this run int i have to check if uh, if this rand list if length of rand list is i need 10 items if rent of rand list is less than or equal to 10 only you are doing this right you generate a random number and add this this is when it is less than or equal to 10 length of rand list is less than or equal to 10 then you do the appended and i'm recalling the so after that i'm recalling the new random function so this is a recursive function now. okay let's see okay finally i'm uh, right finally i'm printing the rand list okay let's run this and see whether we are getting the expected outcome okay it's empty uh, so you have defined this global global rand list right the same rand list you are referring otherwise you are getting the empty one still empty why what has happened oh, you have to call the random right to call the function i have not called the function new random i'm calling the new random function okay let's see Okay, now we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, why 11 is there? Because this is the issue. So, okay, now you can see the 10 items, right? Because uh, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 items. So, this is luck by chance. Luck by chance means you will get the random number, all are unique. No repetitive values. But you have to assure that. How? How to assure? Before appending, you have to check whether a number is there. If number is there, you are not appending. Else only, you are appending. That is easy. So you can say for item or for n in. For n in, you can say for n in uh, the list, each item in rand list. So before inserting, you have to check for n in rand list, you have to check if k is generated is equal to n. If k equal to n, you are not going to append. That means if k, k is not equal to n only, you are going to append the number. For n in the rand list, if k not equal to n, you are going to append. Otherwise, you are not, not going to append. That you don't want to mention. You can just run it. <coughs> oh. For n in rand list, for n in rand list, okay. 
if k not be equal in you're going to happen if this k not equal to n you are not going to happen and initially so what has happened okay let's append one item otherwise it might be the issue let's append one item first there is no item to compare might be the issue <coughs> first i'm going to append an item a random item and after that i'm calling the new random item let's see now okay now we can see so what has happened 32 it has appended um, multiple times if k not equal n if k not equal n you are appending but you can see the repetitive numbers are appended working completely other way so what's my logic error if k not equal n you do the appending You are calling the new random. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say let's say other way. Without using this, if k equal n, let's print duplicate. I'm fine with the duplicates are there. Okay, one time it says duplicate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Uh, 31 is duplicated. So it says duplicate. Else, print, no duplicate. let's run this and see whether this is working okay forever you don't have any duplicates right that means the duplicate part and no duplicate part is detected okay that means it's working one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, ten numbers are inserted. Duplicates, no duplicate, seeing it in is happening. But only thing is, uh, yeah, only thing here is, when it is not duplicated only, you have to append. Here only you have to append one, but when I give like this, what will happen? It's generating some duplicate values multiple times. All right, without using this, uh, let's use some easy one, search in one, without using this, if fails and all, some logic here. I, I, I couldn't rectify that, sorry. So I have to check the code again. And I'm, I'm checking like this, uh, if, uh, k in if k in the list brand list if k in brand list print let's say duplicate now you are searching okay no duplicate let's run again No duplicate. Let's run again. Still no duplicates. So good. <laughs> it's, uh, 
okay let's do everything uh, for 10 time for t in range let's do this for 10 times right everything for 10 times each round i have to start with the clear new list okay here you found two cases with duplicates so the, uh, the these two duplicates what is that 32 is duplicated yeah correct 100 is duplicated only one time you found duplicate Okay, this is finding the duplicates. This time also, the first time also, you have duplicates. What is that? 18 is duplicated. 18 is duplicated. Okay, so if it is a duplicate, then you should avoid that list. To do that, I can say not in. If K not in this, then add this. If K is already not there in the list, then add this. Then let's see, run this, and you can find now all are purely unique randoms. All 10 occurrence, you got unique randoms. And if you repeat this 40 times, still you will get the randoms without any duplicates. You can check here, no duplicates in this. Can you see? We have done this 40 times. Mm -hmm should not see any duplicate among this. Inside that, no duplicates. Okay, so then searching is working here. So that four is like it's too much recursive. That's why I'm using searching. So if K is not in random list, then append that. So that is the easy way of doing this. So it's like pseudocode, right? It's easy. So this part is not needed, right? This part, no need to run this 40 times. I need, just need one list i have just if you need one list just this code is enough okay this is my random list and so let's remove the random list and this is my function and i need to import the random right because that's how i generate the random import random is re uh, required then writing the function is required we cannot exactly tell run this 10 times why why we can't tell if you run this 10 times, we cannot assure that we will not get duplicates. If we will not get duplicates, it's 10 times, correct. But let's say you got three duplicates, they need to run 13 times. But that's why I'm not giving a loop for this. I'm giving a recursion without giving a loop. Okay? Yeah. Question is something similar to that. You can check the question. And uh, so you just check the paper program in paper 2020 November, I think. And that's a similar question uh, related to these randoms and related to in, uh, avoiding duplicates. So please take a screenshot of this. Mm -hmm. Please take a screenshot of this and then <coughs> this is how you generate the random numbers. So with that, I'm going to stop for today. Right? Mm -hmm. So we'll discuss more questions, in, uh, more question and answers in next week. Programming. So I'll make sure to, uh, actually, I'll discuss something similar to the paper, right? So today, actually, I just want to give you some theoretical knowledge as well as some practical ability. But uh, next day, I'll discuss some related questions related to the paper.